Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. With this reaction we have a discussion on The Bachelor, episode 9. Let's get controversial everyone, because apparently we can't have a season of this show anymore without really difficult and complicated questions of intimacy at the Fantasy Suites, and it leads to everyone just fighting all over social media and YouTube and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been clear about the Fantasy Suites. Like, I get that having the, the alone time is important, but, like, having it be very specifically set in a bedroom, and then you're going to propose to somebody six days later, it is super weird. This entire experience is super weird, and this is also, like, this entire episode could be, could be sponsored by the words, that person has some points, because I think every single person has some good arguments about everything that's going on in this episode, but that doesn't mean that they're 100% right, it also doesn't mean they're 100% wrong. Guess what? We live in a world of nuance, where there can be a lot of different gradients, and I understand a lot of how Madison is feeling, but that doesn't mean that Madison handled everything right, and it doesn't mean that Peter handled everything right. Yes. We have a lot to get into here. I feel like it's probably going to be about 90% Madison just in advance. I do not have it within me to talk about Hannah Ann's overnight date for longer than maybe two or three minutes. Ouch! It's, it just there wasn't anything interesting that happened. I just felt at the very least that between them... The one thing I did find very okay. interesting that I'll say before we really get into it about Hannah Ann, she was really the only one that went into her date and was clear and steady with him. That was like, listen, it's difficult to go into these dates because you know what's going to be going on with other people, but I want you to know that no matter what you choose, I'm still going to be here on the other side of it. And nobody else said that to him. Yeah. And nobody else asked him how he was doing with this and actually saying, I know that this can't be easy for you. We know it's not easy for us, but I don't for a second think that it's easy for you. And I think Hannah Ann is probably... She may actually be the right choice for Peter in the end just because it seems like they have mutual understandings about things. And After this episode, yeah. I think she is the right choice for him. Sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated. And they may be right for each other. And I do like Hannah Ann more with every passing episode. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she's the most compelling television in the world. But, hey, you know, if she's right for Peter, that's kind of what the show is about at this point. Yeah. All right, well, before we get into all things Madison, though, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other updates. Okay, so let, let's go back to the very beginning here because there was a lot of just confusion as to the timeline of events, how they were going to happen leading into this episode. So after the Final Four Rose ceremony, Madison pulls Peter aside and they have a conversation that really feels like it was four or five minutes of nothing actually being accomplished at all. This was a difficult conversation to watch. Yeah. She was not clear. I'm just going to put it out there. If you want to come fight me in the comments, that's cool. She was not clear. She was not clear. He asked her three times. So if I'm intimate with the other women, are you going to leave? Yeah. She never straight answered it and said, yes. Yes, I will. Yes, I'm going to leave you. That is what she needed to say if that's how she felt. She danced around it. She hinted at it. She leaned into it. But she was never clear with him. And this ended up being sort of than Peter going forward and making other decisions. I think if he had heard her say, this is black and white for me. If you do this, then I'm out. I know nobody wants to give an ultimatum, but if that's how she feels, she needs to say it clearly. And she didn't, in my opinion. And above all that, Everyone else still kind of felt like it was an ultimatum. Like when you have the extremely awkward, all three of these women in the band, not the fantasy suite, and just their own suite together. Come on, talking producers. about it. Like, that was just mean. Listen. They knew what they were doing. 
there's all kinds of tomfoolery going on with the producers. I like to stir up drama, but this is just me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Let's make them all be in there. I mean, I'll talk more about that in a bit. But yeah, this was, it was mean. And the other women were kind of able to pick up on what ultimately Madison's intention was. And I mean, is it possible that Peter could have read between the lines of this conversation? Sure. But at the same time, he's in his own headspace as The Bachelor, and I think he's kind of hearing what he wants to hear. Also, he didn't have all the information. She decided not to tell him she was saving herself for marriage until after everything happened. That, that along with being clear, would have given Peter a much more clear picture. I know this is the word of the video. It yeah. would have given him a very clear picture of who Madison is, where she stands with herself, where she stands in their relationship, and what her expectations are going forward, and what the consequences will be if he makes this decision. I think the other thing I have in my head in all of this is that before Peter went on The Bachelor, I feel like the producers probably put him through like a Bachelor boot camp, where he probably calls up past Bachelors, and maybe he chats with Colton or Ari or some of these other guys about what they go through. And it's probably told to him that, you know, once you get the hometown dates, it's going to be really difficult because understandably, nobody wants to think about the lead being with someone else. Peter probably knows this very, very well from his own season of The Bachelorette. And maybe he's just sort of viewing what Madison is saying in that moment as sort of just an extreme version of kind of what he went through and how he felt because he probably had a lot of those same feelings of I don't want Hannah to be with anyone other than me so I don't think he might have been able to fully capture what Madison is saying and the thing is is that I do really like Madison and my opinion towards Madison as a person it doesn't change in this episode really at all I mean I I respect her for what she believes and how she wants to live her life. I think that the challenge is, though, that I think she was, because she does have a lot of feelings for Peter. I think it's very, very clear. Absolutely. They clearly have a lot of feelings for each other. Yeah. I just, I think she was really scared that he was Mm -hmm. going to reject her, That and she was very insecure, but she doesn't want to, and she doesn't want to let her feelings stand in the way of this relationship that she also wants. Mm -hmm. I think this puts her in a headspace after the rose ceremony where she's just not able to articulate clearly what she's trying to say because she is just so nervous and anxious in that moment. That's just my read of it. I don't think she's intentionally trying to be vague, but it comes across as very vague. No, I don't think she was trying to be vague. I think that there was a lot on the line. Mm -hmm. I think she also understands that the two of them, while they have very strong feelings for each other or love each other, they are very different people that are living very different lifestyles. And she was probably nervous to say something because she knows that Peter has been with people before marriage. He is spiritually not on the same track as her there there is a lot of things that are very different about them important things that are different about them that's not to say that they can't get past them or find a way to make it work in a way that will work for both of them but that's got to be intimidating so while i say that she wasn't clear and she wasn't yeah it's okay that she was nervous and maybe that these were some of the things that stopped her from being clear. I mean, she had to have been nervous about this stuff of how he was going to react. But Mm -hmm. I think it actually would have helped her a little bit more if she was clear with him because then he, I I don't know for sure that he would have made other decisions, but at least he would have had all the information to make other decisions if he wanted to. Yeah, and I mean, unfortunately, we probably won't ever know that. I mean, he might have done the same exact thing. I, I Personally, yeah. I think he probably still would have done the same thing. I think he's, he even said this, like he is in relationships with more than just Madison, and yeah. it's true. So while Madison is saying, you know, these are my values, and this is how I feel, and I shouldn't be, you know, penalized for how I feel. No, you shouldn't be. No, not at all. And he's not. Mm -hmm. doing any of that but the relationships he has with the other women shouldn't be influenced by what's going on with madison 
This is the process. He's trying to figure out who he wants as his wife, and the process isn't done yet. I, if there was one question I could, I, I wish I could ask Madison in this moment, it would be because, you know, she probably saw Peter's season of The Bachelorette. I'm really curious if she was very nervous that she was going to come across like Luke P. came across in his conversation with Hannah. And I already know there are some ridiculous people on Twitter who are comparing them. Situations are not the same at all. Luke P. was emotionally manipulative. Very, very different. But I do wonder if that was in her head at all because of how that scene played out last season and, you know, some of the things that he was saying to her about intimacy then. I I don't know the answer to that, but regardless. Oh, sorry. My worry is, or my... My concern would be is if Madison saw Peter's season yeah. and then went into this season knowing that she was going to tell him that he can't use his fantasy suites. If you're going to go into a season with someone like Peter yeah. that you know is has already been intimate on this show, yeah. then he is likely to be intimate going forward, that this is something for him in his own morals and his own way of living that he is comfortable with. This is his his way of doing things. So you know, I knew going into the yeah. season that he is going to use the fantasy suites. That was a no-brainer. For sure. So if she went into this season being like, oh, The Bachelor's Peter. Oh, I'm going to go into this season and I'm not going to be okay with him doing this. So if I get this far, then I'm going to tell him then is a little bit unfair. It's. I think it's just, it's, it's a very delicate situation. We don't know how Madison felt going in. We don't know exactly if she projected she would feel this way, but the truth of the matter is she feels this way now. Peter feels his way now, like you sort of articulated earlier. He has the ability as the lead to set his own rules as to how he wants to run things, how he wants to do the fantasy suite. Madison is entitled to have her own rules for herself as well. Yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the two are going to line up and, you know, she has an option now to leave or Peter has an option to let her go and maybe they'll still work it out. And for the record, I actually don't think that she went into this season already thinking that she was going to do this. I think Mm -hmm. that the stress got to her as it got, as it gets to other people. Yeah. It's a, really hard situation very difficult and it made even more difficult by having them all living together okay let, let's just get to this part of the situation now because this that was not cool it bachelor was, producers that was not cool hey, i didn't enjoy this i didn't like watching it okay let's ask Please this don't question bring this back. what was more unenjoyable the three women living together or peter's australian accent that he busted out at at least four occasions peter never <laughs> do that again <laughs> I am more fine with that. This twist, this, no, no, no. Don't bring this back. I don't like it at all. It was really, it was uncomfortable for me to watch. Not enjoyable, not like drama and fun. I hated it. There, especially the specific things that were sort of said, like nobody would come out and say anything that was sort of happening, but you could sort of see like the, the adjectives that Victoria was using upon coming back. Like it was very clear what she was talking about. She just didn't want to say it. Madison gets up and leaves the room. And then you have Hannah Ann before Victoria even comes back sort of being like, well, if she's been gone for a long time, that must mean she's having a very good time. And it's Madison just sitting right there. It's It was all bad. It was all bad. It was all just ridiculous. And obviously the fact this is the first time they've ever done this, it kind of shows they knew what they were doing from the start, just like they knew yes. what they were doing by giving Madison the last overnight date. It was just so negative. And this show, for me, I really enjoy the drama of it and all the silliness of it, like the champagne game. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. silly and fun. I love the romance of it all and sort of the big sweeping gestures. This particular thing that they did is an absolute no for me. I just think this entire... I, I, I still think there's a chance that Peter finds love and is happy. Like I, like I said earlier, I think it seems all of a sudden really now like he and Hannah Ann are really actually clicking and fully compatible mm-hmm. and on the same page. Yeah, but now I have a prediction of how this is all going to go. So okay. because he has these other two relationships and Peter seems to always want to go after what he can't have and what he's not able to, to have right away. Yeah. So... 
my prediction now is after what Madison said, which is that she feels, and I do not blame her one bit, completely awkward with the idea that he will have slept with two other people and then get down on one knee six days later and propose to her. Yeah, ick. I, I agree with you, Madison. That is real weird, and it's always been very weird. But anyways... My prediction now is he's actually not going to propose to anyone mm -hmm. and that the whole mother, go get her, yeah, yeah. that that's going to be Madison and that he is going to propose to her on the show and it will be months later. So it won't be, oh, well, you slept with these two girls two weeks ago or a week ago or six days ago. Yeah. Now it's months have passed. That's what I think is going to happen. He's going to end up with Madison. I I love so much how deep down the rabbit hole people have gotten with these theories at this point. I have heard everything from, oh, Hannah Ann and Peter are in the same place because of, like, blank thing that's in the background of an Instagram story to, oh, is Madison filming with the camera crew to tonight, oh, Chris Harrison's a significant other, Lawrence Emo's deleting a Twitter post that might be suggesting a spoiler. It's like, okay, guys, you know, none of this may really actually mean anything. Maybe some people are just playing with us. I, I, I feel like your theory's probably right. I, I, I felt like he's going to be with Madison for a while, yeah. and, you know, maybe they will work out. I mean, I'm giving more stock now in Hannah Ann than I have before just because it actually seems like the one relationship that's a little bit the most normal. Yeah, like, no disrespect to Madison, because I really like her. Yeah. I just think that Peter and Hannah Ann are actually really, like, vibing really well, and she's being... She's being very sort of more about also Peter. So, like I said at the beginning, their their fantasy sweet date started with Hannah Ann asking about him. Hey, yeah. how are you doing through this? Because this has got to be hard on you. I know it's hard on me. How is it for you? Also, I just want to let you know I'm going to be your steady rock through this. At the end of this, after you've done, you know, gone off with Victoria, gone off with Madison, I will still be here. I was just like, I'm sold now. Like, I've always liked her, but mm -hmm. now I'm sold that this is a relationship that really could work outside of the show. And. You know, I, I, there is a part of me that feels a little bit bad for Hannah Ann because there's all these memes that are going on online right now of sort of like when you, and they're just showing various pictures and gifts of her from the season. And they're all like, when you go on the show for Instagram followers and realize you have to be engaged to a pilot at the end, suggesting like that, Matt, that Hannah Ann doesn't care at all about Peter and she's just there for fame. I mean, it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is a show and they're they can edit whatever they want, but it doesn't feel like. Yeah, that. it doesn't feel that way to me. I mean, yeah, sure, I'm sure Hannah Ann wants fame at the end of all of this. And if she's not with Peter, the amount of trolling that she's done to make people think she's with Peter on social media is kind of ridiculous. But I think she does seem to have really genuine feelings for them. I think the two of them are nice together. She seems like a perfectly nice human being. Like I said, not the most captivating. I am so happy that it is 18 minutes into this video, by the way. We haven't talked about Victoria at all. Yeah. And That's there... because there's nothing really to talk about here. No. Yeah, they ended up having, you know, more difficult conversations. And then they hooked up and and that's it. Yeah, they seem to have hooked up. They had these weird conversations about... I don't know. I didn't really make sense of any of it. It's all the same stuff. Yeah. Like, their relationship is exhausting and I'm really at the end of it. Can we put all of these people through some element of media training so that we don't have to hear like every three words? I I'm starting to really... so, And I know I say like here or there as well, so I'm not Everybody saying I'm perfectly does. innocent with it, but it is... The amount of liking this season is near, like, head exploding, brain cells popping off left and right level. And the good news is... We're almost at the end. And the, probably the better news, though, is that actually, I mean, I do love The Bachelor. This season has a certain, like, frustrating quality to it here and there. Just because I think that the contestants have been a little bit haywire. Peter hasn't been the best. But we're in for a good finale, I think. I think so, too. I think it is going to be 
dramatic and uh yeah i still that's that's my theory no proposal till uh, after it's all over yeah I, I think there will be a proposal at some point i don't think it's going to be at the after the final rose i i don't think proposing on live tv is really the best way to do this i can see that happening okay, i'm putting my money on okay that. i'm not putting my money on that but mostly because i will I, I will cry not happy tears if that happens i'm putting my money on that i there's and a, then we can all come back and watch Matt cry on the speaker. I will cry. On, it's just... Okay, I'm going to admit it now because there's 20 minutes. We're 20 minutes into this video. What? Like no one's watching anymore? No, but it's... it's, <laughs> it's there's a really horrible part of me that thinks, what if they said no on the live sh after show? Like how... Would that not be, like, one of the ten most dramatic moments in television history? The just, like, live yes. heartbreak. Yes, it would be. And I'm sure all the Bachelor producers are all be like, Whoa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you know, they just put three people that are all sleeping with the same guy I know. in a room together. So, I mean, they don't care. Yeah, it's sort of like when Whatever you have... Whatever the moment is, they'll take it. It's like when you have that moment at the sporting event where they do the proposals. I remember watching one where somebody said no, and then they just other person's like running out of the arena, and I'm just like, okay, don't do don't do this to me. But okay, well we will have a video up previewing a little bit of the finale, but also the women tell all, which is coming up next week. Yeah. Uh, but what did you guys think about this episode? Do you? Uh, I, I mean, I don't. I'm not going to ask whose team is you or are you on because I don't think it's that sort of situation. But no. do you think that Madison should stick around? Do you still have hope for her and Peter? Do you think Peter should be with Hannah Ann? Share in the comments. I'm intentionally ignoring Victoria. And if you do like this video... I think we all know that's not know. happening. Exactly. Well, <laughs> just give this video a like, subscribe, and you can support us further by checking the link in the description to the Carter Matt store. And we'll see you here next time.